これからウィリアム・ギブソンさんに会いに行きます。The future is here. Wow. <laughs> This is amazing. Even before the, the, the term virtual reality did not exist at the time, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, you coined the cyberspace and also Jack in. Yeah. Did, did you think of it, you were predicting the future? I there had, no virtual reality term was when, invented. When I wrote Near Answer in 1981, mm -hmm. I had never heard the term. And I went by a games arcade. I was struck by how I could see that the teenagers who were playing the games in their bodies, in their posture, there was a kind of yearning to have like a deeper immersion. Deep. It made a very strong impression on me. And very shortly after that, I started trying to write the, the cyberspace mm -hmm. idea. Some of Neuromancer I got from listening to people who worked in the early computer industry, I didn't understand what they were talking about, but I took it as poetry. I loved the poetry of it. Just taking the technical language, knowing nothing about it, and imagining what it could mean. Technology wa 多分社会の成り立ちのルールを変えられると思うんですね。大きく言うとヒューマンオグメンテーションと言ってまして、人間の能力っていうのはえっ、ー、とどうやったら拡張できるか。で、その中でも存在感をどう変えるか、か拡張するかってところ、まあ自分の感覚ですね、見る感覚みたいなのを他の人間の感覚と交換したりこうまあ持ってったりすることができると。でそのジャックインっていうのはニューロマンサーとかその前のクローム襲撃とかっていう SF に出てくる概念でもともとはあのサイバースペースにジャックインするつまり VR 空間に没入することをジャックインって呼んでたんですね。I am very much interested in human augmentation. That augmentation can change the boundary of humans. So if the, we are very highly tightly connected others, so maybe two person. It's unified, so it's, a, it's a, uh, the definition of self and other yes. will be changed. Yeah, I totally agree. Texture of life in the future will have much more to do with the interface mechanisms between humans and technology mm -hmm. than it will with the technology. People try to imagine, you know, truly evolved AI. But I think that what we're likely to get before that is a hybrid of human and highly evolved AI. And then once we have that, I don't know how much need there will be to go, go to a pure form of AI. With, our, with augmentation, we'll simply incorporate it into our, our, sen our basic sense of what reality is. Uh, talking about happiness, 
the if the augmentation is more like related happiness because maybe if you want to maybe play a piano and the technology can support to learning piano so just just not as a convenient technology but for uh, make people more motivated I think that's a, a very good way of very good way of looking at it so there is a lot of inconvenient things in the world why should you use a uh, umbrella in the rain. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't want to care about the umbrella. So they maybe I think like a force field can reflect the raindrops. I think one of the source of the, uh, the engineer inspiration or the research inspiration is to uh, change the problem or maybe game, game change of the problem. I believe. And uh, then the science fiction is quite, I think, important for. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I suspect that all technologies are morally neutral until a human being is involved doing something with them. You could use a hundred nuclear bombs to, to drive a starship <laughs> to mm. the, the other side of the galaxy. So I think it's really about what we do with technologies. I think of science fiction as being more important in that it allows us to see the world that we live in in a unique way than it is in terms of predicting what's, what's going to happen. Your famous quote, this is, the future is already here. Yeah. It's just not very evenly distributed. Okay, why, why you say this? When I say that the future is already here, it's just not very evenly distributed. I mean it very literally. Every stage of history, when you go back and, you know, if you read widely enough, you'll find somebody who had the idea. So that person, knowing it, maybe publishing some brief magazine article, which was ignored for a hundred the next hundred years, that person had found the future. I was inspired to look for things in the world around me that might be that. What I did with Neuromancer was to look around me in the world and try to find things that felt to me, things in the real world that felt to me like they could become the future. So I found things that had already arrived, and then I imagined them evolving. Well, you know, this has been one of the most enjoyable conversations I've ever had recorded. He's, he's very serious, but playfulness to his approach. ニューロマンス読んだ時はもうこんなぶっ飛んでる小説あるかぐらい思って今までの読んだ SF も全然違ったのでいやこの世界って言ったらなんだろうってずっとやっぱりもう思ってたんですよねだから今日ご本人に会